Decaf coffee. To some coffee enthusiasts, this word can be seen as a bit of a swear word. But to those of us who like to enjoy six cups of coffee throughout the day, maybe we should consider taking it a little bit easier. I knew I needed to cut down, but I also didn't want to give up my favorite hot drink. So recently, I tried switching over to decaf as an experiment to see how it affected me. So I could still enjoy a nice cup of brew every day, but I was also able to sleep a little bit better at night. And whilst I was sipping my decaffeinated brew, I did ask myself, how do they actually remove the caffeine? Now, on its own, the caffeine molecule is an astringent alkaloid. During the roasting and decaffeination process, the potency of caffeine is lost. Aroma and flavor compounds might be removed or diminished during decaffeination as well. And whilst coffee beans that have been decaffeinated are troublesome to roast, the actual roasting process can create unpleasant textures and tastes that come with a number of decaf coffees. This happens when the roasting process is improperly performed. However, proper decaffeination processes protect the rich and original flavor aspects of the beverage once the caffeine is extracted. So where did coffee decaffeination begin? Well, the process started in Germany over 100 years ago. Whilst a number of patents have since arisen, these days, only a few main decaffeination techniques in the industry are actually used. All processes start in a similar manner. Roasted beans are integrated with water and steam to soften and open them up before coffee bonds in them are released. Once this step is completed, various methods, including the ones that we're about to go through, can be used. So with this information in mind, let's have a look at the three most common ways that coffee can be decaffeinated. Number one, the Swiss water process. Arabica beans of high quality are almost exclusively used for decaffeination with Swiss water. As expected, such high quality final products come with higher prices. This process doesn't involve the use of chemicals. To begin with, flavor extracts and caffeine are stripped out of the beans after a steam and water soak. This initial bean batch gets thrown out. The water now contains the caffeine, which gets filtered out through carbon. At this point, the caffeine-free flavored coffee extract solution is the only thing that remains. This extract is then used to absorb caffeine out of a new bean batch. Because of solubility scientific principles, the caffeine inside of the new coffee beans is transferred to a low concentration area, the extract, from a high concentration area, the actual bean. So between 94 and 96% of the amount of caffeine is extracted by this process. Because no chemicals are involved, a carbon filter is what they actually use for water purification. It is considered to be a natural and organic technique. There are other water decaffeination methods that don't use Swiss water, so chemicals are sometimes used. And instead of using charcoal filters, chemical solvents can extract caffeine from a coffee charged flavor source. So you must keep the solvent away from the coffee beans though. The only thing that the beans should touch is water. The coffee's flavor characteristics and rich scent are only slightly modified. Number two, solvent techniques. Ethyl acetate and methylene chloride are solvents that are frequently used for coffee decaffeination. While synthetic methylene chloride is criticized for being an environmental hazard, Use of it is permitted, assuming that residues do not exceed limits specified. Ethyl acetate can be derived from all natural ingredients. It can also be synthetically produced. This approach is marketed as a natural decaffeination process. Sadly, there isn't any other way of determining whether the source of the solvent is synthetic or natural. The beans or the solvent contact techniques. Once the initial moistening phase has passed, circulation of the solvent occurs within the beans, taking the caffeine out. From there, water is used to rinse the beans before they are once again steamed. The residual solvent is evaporated before being dried out. The beans can then be roasted. Extracted caffeine tends to be consumed as soft drinks, as well as for medicinal reasons. 
This chemical approach extracts between 96 and 98% of caffeine. The beans solvent no contact technique. Once the initial moistening phase has passed and hot water has fully soaked both coffee extracts and coffee out of the beans, the water, now flavor charged, is removed from the strip and integrated with a caffeine uniting solvent. The solvent that carries the caffeine then gets taken out. The caffeine free flavor charged water gets reunited with coffee beans that were stripped so that oils and coffee flavors can be reabsorbed. When this technique is used, the bean should never make contact with the solvent. Residual solvent gets evaporated during the last steaming phase. And it also gets evaporated when the coffee bean roasting process is taking place. Decaffeinating with solvents. Does this worsen the taste of decaf? The solvent decaffeination process has a problem. Solvents not only remove caffeine, they also extract other chemicals contained in coffee beans. Some that provide the beverage with its unique scent and flavor. We do not have a complete list of these chemicals as the chemical that gets removed with the caffeine varies based on the bean type, solvent type, and the length of the process. Nonetheless, the suggested chemical proportion will impact the taste of the coffee. Purists of coffee can take comfort in knowing that their hunches were true. Decaffeinated coffee isn't as tasty as its counterpart. For people who simply want to experience the taste of a cappuccino minus the jitters that come with it, feel free to enjoy a cup of decaf. Three, the carbon dioxide decaffeination technique. Once the initial moisturizing phase is completed, decaffeinated coffee beans are placed in an extractor, supercritical pressurized carbon dioxide that is between 250 and 300 times the regular atmospheric pressure is used. Once this pressure is reached, carbon dioxide becomes somewhat fluid with a form that fluctuates between liquid and gas. When the supercritical solvent is passed through the beans, caffeine migrates towards it. The solvent, which is now rich with caffeine, is passed through a caffeine absorbing filter, which can be reused. Once pressure is released and this process is complete, the solvent dissipates after reverting back to gas. It doesn't cost a lot of money to obtain carbon dioxide, nor is it toxic. This carbon dioxide technique extracts between 96 and 98% of caffeine without taking out other flavor characteristics of the coffee. What consumers should be mindful of decaffeinated coffee labels and the ads for them. Most caffeine free types of coffee for sale in specialty shops are first sent to decaffeination plants in Germany and Switzerland. A majority of decaffeinated coffee is produced in these two countries. Upon completion of processing, they are sent to North America. Take comfort in knowing that the standards for those processing in those countries are stringent and are quality regulations of decaffeination facilities. The Food and Drug Administration FDA, mandates that coffee can leave no more than 3% of the caffeine in green beans that are untreated in order to be labelled as decaffeinated. If you're shopping for decaffeinated coffee, have a look to determine if it's a Robusta or Arabica blend. Based on the kind of blend and or bean, the quantity of coffee that is left over in the final product can differ also. For instance, the amount of caffeine in decaffeinated Robusta coffee is higher than that of Arabica coffee. This is because Robusta beans contain almost double the amount of caffeine from its natural state than Arabica beans. Conventionally, Robusta beans that are inferior are selected for decaffeination since they produce a greater byproduct of caffeine. The extracted caffeine is then sold for soft drink and medicinal purposes afterwards. More different varieties of coffee beans than ever are getting decaffeinated for the superior flavor and finished body they feature. A coffee product with reduced caffeine has never been more appreciated than it is today. And so that wraps up today's video. If you want to learn more, go ahead and check out the full article in the description below. Like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more videos like this one. Cheers and we'll see you in the next one. Decaf tastes good.